This vignette comes to us from the webinar, Engaging Technology and Online Pedagogy. Join Brian Mall of November Learning as he talks about using Twitter as a teaching tool. One of my best sources of professional development today is Twitter. Twitter has become my, my number one go-to source for all kinds of information. But to really understand how Twitter works, what you need to understand is something called hashtags. So you see in this fourth tweet that's on my list right now, there's the word election written in blue. And there's a pound symbol in front of it. That's a hashtag, and that's the organizational structure of Twitter. So when I went in to my, my conversation with this person in Egypt, the way I was originally able to connect with her is I went in and I found the appropriate hashtags that people were using in Egypt at the time. And the way that I did that is I went up into my search bar, and I simply typed the word Egypt. Then as I scroll through this list, I want to see what are the popular Egypt hashtags being used right now. I see Egypt, I see Sinai, I see Egypt again, and I scroll through some more, I see Egypt again, and on and on down the page. Now at the times where the protests were going on, the two biggest hashtags that were being used, one was the hashtag Egypt, and the other was a hashtag Jan25, which stood for January 25th, or the day that these protests got started. So when I went on Twitter, I typed my tweet to say, I wonder if the people in Egypt are buying this, and I included the hashtag Egypt and the hashtag Jan25. Immediately by doing that, my tweet went beyond the 1,500 followers I had to a global audience, but at the same time, it streamlined to a very focused group of individuals interested in one topic. So let me show you how this might be useful to you in your classrooms. We've developed and have published on our website, which you'll get a link to, within our handout section, a handout called Popular Education Hashtags on Twitter. And as I open this up, what you'll see is that there are hashtags for just about any subject area, any educational level, any particular topic, or so on. And these can be used to ask questions or to get resources from people interested in the same types of information that you teach and that your students learn. So my son came home from school one day. He's in junior high school, and he's taking pre-algebra right now. And he's about at the point where he's maxed out the level of what I know about math. So, in his problem, we played with it for a while, couldn't figure it out. So I said, we're going to find some people who can help us. So I took out my cell phone, took a photograph of the math problem. We published it on Twitter with the question, please, with the question who can help my son out with this math problem? And at the end of that question, I included the hashtag MathChat. Immediately when I've done that, I'm able to get an audience that can really focus on math and can help him understand that problem. Now the other way that this can be used is what another teacher did, and I, I seem to have a lot of examples from Texas, but this teacher was from Texas as well, is she went to a workshop of mine where she learned about Twitter from the first for the first time. And she went back to school, she taught high school geometry, and she told her students, you know, I just signed up for Twitter. And she was only using this for educational purposes, so she asked her students to sign up and start following what she was going to post. She didn't know quite yet what she was going to post yet, but she was going to come back to it at some point. Then one night she was out at a baseball game, and she posted a very simple message on her feed. Her kids had just finished talking about angles, and she was at a baseball game. So she asked, do you remember where the perfect bunt is? The first one to tell me gets a surprise on Monday. And while she's at the game, students start fe feeding responses back to her. So she thought that was pretty cool. The next day, or the next game she was at, she posted another question. Can you take this cup and using volume write a warm-up question for our class tomorrow? 
and students start writing responses back to her. And they're bringing in these ice cubes and they're talking about sales of items and all this kind of stuff. So really great ways that now students are starting to look at math in the world around them. So she's doing this on a regular basis with her students now and what she's finding is that the students who have graduated from the year before or have left her class from the year before, now they're coming back and they're still responding to questions even though they're not in her class anymore. So the math has really become a real part of their life now. And it's exciting for the students, it's exciting for the teachers, and exciting for me to even watch the growth that this one teacher has had over a period of time. So in closing, what I really want you to come away with here is that students have a fantastic opportunity now to interact with the world around them in very unique and exciting ways. But what it all comes back to is being able to look critically at information that's out on the web and be able to build strong relationships that will help them to make sense of this information, develop it further, and make great connections for, for future activities in the classroom.